Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. The Rosetta mission to Comet 67P may be leading comet science to a watershed moment. The foundational theory of modern cometology is that comets are primordial, icy leftovers of the early solar system. Yet virtually nothing we've learned in the most recent comet missions supports this theory. As discussed in the previous Space News, recent data from Comet 67P has provided ESA scientists with yet another in a long string of surprises. In late 2014, scientists studying data from Rosetta's ion and electron sensor made the completely unexpected discovery of electron densities and fluxes close to the comet nucleus. Today, Scientists interpreting spectroscopic data suggest that these electrons play a role in breaking up water molecules and carbon dioxide supposedly spewing from the comet's surface. However, this interpretation is an assumption based on the continued faith in the icy comet theory. But is another interpretation possible? At the forthcoming Thunderbolts Conference, EU 2015, Paths of Discovery in Phoenix, Arizona, a featured speaker will be Dr. Franklin Anariba, a specialist in electrochemistry and a lecturer at Singapore University of Technology and Design. Today, we asked Dr. Anariba to offer his analysis of the evidence for electrochemical processes on Comet 67P. On the uh, recent report in the Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal titled Measurements of the Near Nucleus Coma of Comet 67P with Ellis by Ultraviolet Spectrograph on Rosetta, and cover in the uh, European Space Agency Rosetta blog, the author detailed the findings on UV initial lines associated with atomic hydrogen, atomic oxygen, and atomic carbon. The data was taken by ELIS, which is a low-power miniature UV imaging spectrograph with a spectral range of 70 to about 220 nanometers. The spectrograph splits the comet's light into various wavelengths from which the chemical composition of the coma can be inferred. The authors are careful to state that the data was collaborated with all the sensing instruments on Rosetta because any conclusion derived from a single technique needs to be taken with caution. It is a web of manuscript and its findings are of great interest to the scientific community at large, but they resonate strongly with the electric universe community. In one hand, resonance fluorescence excitation has been the principal excitation mechanism associated with solar radiation in the UV region. This is a mechanism that one associates with photons. On the other hand, the recorded spectra along the line of sight of the slit of Alice show, as the authors pointed out, quite unexpected emission line spectra when compared to previously observed coma spectra taken from Earth or other space probes located at a considerable distance from comets. Based on the recorded data and subsequent analysis, the authors propose photoelectron impact dissociation as the mechanism in action near the nucleus. This was done by comparing the ratio of relative intensities between atomic hydrogen Lyman alpha uh, and uh, atomic hydrogen Lyman beta emission lines and subsequent comparison to the previously established laboratory findings. For instance, the report ratio was about five, and the uh, laboratory findings show a ratio of about seven, which contrasts with the ratio of about 300, the mechanism where resonant fluorescence excitation. This clearly shows that the electron impact is a valid conclusion in this case. Photoelectron impact is association of both two steps. First, UV photons ionize the parent molecules, and second, the release electrons subsequently impact other molecules in the vicinity, ionizing and energizing them to a higher electronic energy state. In addition, the authors propose the use of the brightness of the uh, atomic hydrogen Lyman beta initial lines as a surrogate, and this is the word for water abundance. This is obviously an assumption that the common system is rich in volatile ices such as water, ammonium, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, just to mention a few. Nonetheless, a recent report by Capriccioni et al. in the special January edition of Science Magazine, it was reported that the infrared readings obtained by Virtus 
visible infrared and thermal imaging spectrometer indicated that the entire illuminated surface of the nucleus of 67P is comprised of opaque minerals associated with non-volatile organic micromolecular materials, suggesting a dehydrated surface lacking ice-rich patches. Hence, it is questionable to assume that the atomic neutral lines are associated with paramolecules such as water and carbon dioxide. Another observation was that the uh, atomic hydrogen and atomic oxygen emission lines, relative intensities, have not varied over a period of four months, even though the comet distance from the Sun has changed from 3.6 to 2.8 astronomical units. This suggests a sustained mechanism independent of solar radiation. In a report by Nielsen E. O. in the year 2015, it was reported that water ions, again, another assumption, reach energies of 800 electron volts, implying an acceleration over a distance of a few 100 kilometers. Assuming the uh, solar wind electric field is the underlying mechanism, the presence of accelerated ions and electrons in the vicinity of the nucleus is an indication of an electrical phenomenon. One of the claims is of particular interest. The authors state, the spatial variation along the slit indicates that excitation occurs within a few hundred meters of the surface. Taken together, it is reasonable to doubt the proposed initial photoionization of the parent molecules. There are two main areas of concern here. One, there is no supporting evidence for the assumption that photoionization occurs first. It is premature to attribute the source of the electrons to photoionization of parent molecules deep in the coma where electric fields and electric fluxes have been observed a few hundred meters from the nucleus. A second area of concern is the attribution of the atomic hydrogen and atomic oxygen emission lines to the presence of water and carbon dioxide species. No measurements of the presence of ice on the surface of 67P have been reported. In other words, it is very likely that atomic hydrogen and oxygen emission lines are not the result of breaking the parent molecules of water and carbon dioxide. During the upcoming Electric Universe 2015 conference in Phoenix, Arizona, I will expand on my previous 2013 presentation and explore a potential cometary mechanism as a source of the electrons observed near the nucleus. In other words, I will talk about electron stripping due to a voltage differential. I propose that the driving force behind the electron impact ionization can be associated with electron stripping due to a voltage differential process between the nucleus and its surrounding plasma chain. Through the optics of this framework, the sources of the electrons are the electron-rich minerals, especially silicate oxides of on 67P, whereby the presence of low ionization potential metals have been reported. Elements with low ionization potential energies such as, such as sodium uh, ion and magnesium ion have been reported by Cosima, which is a mass spectrometer equipped with a time of flight detector on collected dust grains from the nucleus as reported by Charles E. Hall in 2015, Nature Magazine. We can then think of electrons traveling from the surface of the nucleus in a radially outward trajectory, ionizing chemical species along its path in the coma, providing the basis for ensuing electrochemical processes. Once electrons are stripped away from the minerals due to a voltage differential, the molecular structure collapses due to changes in the cation radius of the electron-rich electropositive atoms within the silicon structure. This dustification process gives rise to a series of silicate species in the form of dust particles. These silicon surfaces can be areas where the chemical reactions can occur. By extension, the source of atomic oxygen and molecular hydroxides, for instance, as well as many other species, can be the result of the dustification process, whereby silicon oxygen bonds are broken and hydroxides are released. Similarly, we can think of hydroxide ions combining with protons from the solar wind to give rise to water molecules. This mechanism of force of formation of atomic hydrogen via the interaction of protons from the solar wind and electrons originated from the nucleus. This same process can be repeated to explain the very large molecular hydrogen gas cloud surrounding the coma of some comets. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.